Okay, we are going to take a look at the Collection 1 paper overview, which is going to be what we're working on for the last three weeks of this semester. It will also end up as your final semester grade. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is expected for this paper. So the assignment, what do you need to complete? Uh, the focus of this collection is the individual and society, from the individual struggle to be a part of society to a nation's struggle to unite for a common cause. Review the collection texts. In each, are the people able to find common ground or not? So that is the question that your essay will be digging into. Are people able to find common ground or not? You have to decide if common ground was achieved in the collection or not. You cannot write about both. You need to write an analytical essay supporting your view of the collection text. Uh, this is a paper that is written in third person. So we will not be using words like I, you, and my. I included a description of analytical essay, but you are arguing. You are fighting for your claim. And we'll talk about that in the next Ed Puzzle that you are going to be completing this week also because the claim is your thesis statement. So right here, if we go down to this part, an effective argument includes a clear claim, a thesis statement, which again, you're going to be going into more depth um, through an Ed Puzzle this week, as well as writing a couple of thesis statements yourself. Begins by engaging the reader with an interesting observation, a quote, or a detail from one of the texts. That's called the hook. So that's the first sentence or two. It organizes the central ideas logically. Those are your three body paragraphs. Supporting and elaborating on the claim or the thesis statement using quotes and examples from the text. You will be using direct quotes and we will be using those quotes through the ICE method that we talked about the week before Christmas. I also will have those supporting videos available if you need a refresher. You will be using transitions to create cohesion among, among sections of the text, and I will supply you with a transition chart. So all you have to do is look at the chart and pick a word or a phrase that you can start your last sentence your last sentence of each body paragraph with, and it should make it fairly easy for you. And has a conclusion section that follows logically from the body of the essay and expresses the writer's own viewpoint on finding common ground. So we're gonna be spending some time in the third week of this paper working on our conclusion, the last paragraph of our paper. We are gonna be writing a five paragraph essay. So the paper checklist, let's talk about that for a minute uses three selections from collection one to support the ideas. If you look right here, you can see that we covered four. You need to pick three of these four. In every body paragraph, the student uses the ICE format, which is what we went over the week before Christmas break. Transitions used from paragraph to paragraph, and that would be the last sentence of our body paragraphs. Restating the thesis in the conclusion, which we are gonna go over in the Ed Puzzle this week, as well as when we have the assignment to write the conclusion, there'll be a video specifically about that. And then MLA format header, and then the works cited page. We're gonna work on the header this week, and then uh, I don't want you to be intimidated by MLA format. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna take it very slow and easy. And I think you're going to find that it's um, a lot simpler than what you think it is. So please make sure that you take a look at these four sections down here so that you know um, those are the four pieces. You have to choose three that you're going to be writing about in your body paragraphs. All right, well, let's take a look at the rubric. I chose four because that's what you would need to get an A. So let's take a look at ideas and evidence. An eloquent introduction, which is what we're going to be working on next week, includes the titles and authors of the works. You have to pick three of the four options, and so you would be listing them in the introduction. Plus, you'd be following that up with the thesis statement that you are writing this week, which presents a unique idea about the text. 
Specific, relevant evidence from the text supports key points. Those are your body paragraphs. And you are going to be using the ICE theory, the ICE method, in order to present that evidence and then back it up. And then a satisfying concluding section, synthesizing the ideas and summaries, summarizes sorry, the analysis and offers a unique insight into the text. We'll be talking more about that in week three, when there will be a video for you uh, to dig more into the concluding paragraph, basically the last five sentences of your paper. If we look at organization, it says key points and supporting details are organized effectively and logically throughout the analysis. Again, this is the ICE theory, the ICE method that we discussed the week before Christmas break. If you were not able to complete those tasks, I would say that's where you need to start first because the ICE method and how you present the information is going to be a huge portion of your grade in this paper. That's what we're going to be looking for, not just in ninth grade, but 10th, 11th, and 12th as well. Varied transitions successfully show the relationship between ideas. The transition chart, which is going to be uh, provided to you in a Google Doc or a PDF, um, is there so that you don't start the same sentence, the same series of sentences over and over again with the same phrase. Um, uh, an example of that would be in this section or in this quote, the, the reader can clearly see or clearly it's clearly stated. And then the next sentence in this quote, and then the next sentence in this quote. So we need to have some kind of variation and that transition chart will provide that so that we are not starting all of our sentences with the same word or phrase. And then we get to language. The analysis has an appropriately formal style and a knowledgeable objective tone. What that means is this is not an I paper. It is a third person paper. That's the formal style. You will not be using words like I, you, or my, or me. Language is precise and captures the writer's thoughts with originality. And then ideas are combined in a variety of ways, again, referencing the transition charts, and then grammar and usage are correct. That's where no red ink comes into play. And I know we don't really care for no red ink, but this is where the practice and the quizzes really pay off when we're getting ready um, to write a paper so that we know the differences between um, there, there, and there. Um, we know when to put in a comma if we're using your as a contraction. Um, and so this is where no red ink will shine and will definitely help you. Also, if you um, add the Chrome extension Grammarly, you can copy and paste your paper into Grammarly and it will um, find any obvious errors for you without charging you, which is great. But how will we complete all of those requirements? Let's take a look at that next. Okay, so let's take a look at the schedule for week one. This paper at minimum is 25 sentences. 25 sentences that are due by, what do they do by? January 22nd. Um, we are writing our first sentence this week, the thesis statement, and honestly, that thesis statement will help you write four more other sentences. So you'll have 20% of your paper pretty much written by the end of this week. The thesis statement is quite a powerful sentence and it does quite a bit for your paper. What I'm saying is, is that your paper is 25 sentences long and there are 22 days to work on it. Uh, so we definitely, or 20 days to work on it, we definitely have um, some time and it, you shouldn't feel overwhelmed. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what we're doing this week. Uh, this week, we have the paper overview schedule video, which you are in right now as an Ed Puzzle answering questions. And then a thesis statement review and explanation, which is a Pear Deck. Now, it would be smart to work on that Monday, Tuesday, and it's due then Wednesday at midnight. Please note that no red ink, there is nothing for Monday or Tuesday. It picks back up on Wednesday, but it's extra credit. It's going to continue being extra credit for the rest of the semester. 
However, if you take a look at your grade and you realize that your grade might need some help, this would be a great way for you to boost your uh, semester grade or your marking period two grade. So on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we're doing two different tasks. We're going to write and submit the thesis statement for the paper, which is going to be a very simple document that you're going to work your way through. And then you're going to submit, a, submit one sentence into Google Classroom. And then uh, we are going to have an Edpuzzle and a Google Classroom assignment um, with formatting our paper. Uh, the header and the footer, we're going to work on that. And we're going to just get that Google Doc prepped and shared with me. And that is going to be ultimately what your paper is going to go into. Um, so you don't have to worry about sharing it in the future. It's already going to be shared, which is great. So those two things, one sentence and one Google Doc that you're not really even typing in, these are very simple assignments. And you have three days to get them done. They're due at midnight this Friday. So a uh, pretty easy week. Now, if we go to the next week, this is probably the meat and potatoes. It doesn't look like much. Obviously, this slide, this looks like a whole lot, but it's not. Um, it's probably uh, half the work of what this work is. This week is going to take. So starting January 11th, you're going to write the four sentences that precede, that are in front of the thesis statement. And you have three days to write four sentences. So that's not bad. Three days to write four sentences. And then on Wednesday, you're going to be working on your body paragraphs and you're going to ice those paragraphs. So then you are going to basically be writing 15 sentences for me in three days. 15 sentences for your English teacher in three days. So five sentences a day. That's not too difficult. And honestly, your thesis statement helps you write the topic sentence. So you only have to really come up with four more for, uh, for each of those paragraphs. Please remember also, no red ink is uh, extra credit for this duration of the, of the assignment and the semester. So we have two things due, um, but they're going to take a little bit more time than the previous week. And then uh, your week three schedule, we're going to have the conclusion in the work cited assignment. So five sentences right there, but you already have the thesis written. So basically you only have to write four more for the conclusion. That's due on Wednesday. And then we're going to have uh, paper creation and a self-edit assignment over three days. And then your paper is due on the 22nd. All right, so what will my tasks look like? Like I said earlier, we are definitely taking this sentence by sentence. I want this paper to be easy, especially since we're distanced. Um, I want us to go ahead and just take it sentence by sentence. This is how we're going to handle the three body paragraphs. These are the paragraphs that come after the introduction and before the conclusion. You have three body paragraphs. And if you see, I took a screenshot of the chart that you're going to be getting every time you have to fill out one of these body paragraphs. So this is body paragraph one. And I need one sentence. And it says that this should directly connect to reason one in your thesis statement. That's why your thesis statement is so awesome because it helps you write your topic sentence and so we'll be going over that um, in a different instructional video. And I will have those linked. So if you see right here, there's a link right here, how to ice, how to put in a transition. Um, and then you'll have your transition word chart also embedded. So I'll always make sure that you have some backup videos to check um, and some resources um, as you work your way through these paragraphs. So then you're going to pick or you're going to introduce the quote. This is where you explain what's happening in the selection that you chose. You need to really treat it as if this person has never read any of the four pieces before and you're really explaining it to them. And that's where that would be typed right here in the blank box. And then you're going to pull a direct quote and you're going to put that right here. And then you're going to explain um, in a few sentences. Why does this quote support my thesis or the point that I'm trying to make up here in box one? 
Um, so you also have to make sure that it's either backing up either that positive or that negative. Um, or I'm sorry, not the change, but the um, were they able to have common ground or not? So was there was common ground achieved or was it not achieved? And that's where the explanation would come in. And then right here, you would go ahead and have a transition into the following paragraph so that there is a flow from one paragraph to the next. So that is what we're going to be doing for each of the body paragraphs. And then at the end of the three weeks, you'll be turning in a completed paper. Um, as I stated, we're taking it piece by piece. And then we're going to collect all of these pieces and we're going to put it into one final product. And it's that final product that we're working on this week and that you will have shared for me during week 17. By the time we get to week 19, you'll have all the pieces and parts to copy and paste into that document that you've already shared with me and you'll be done.